Good morning. How are you? So happy to have you here. Uh, this is Elevens is with Lisa, and I am Lisa. I'm Lisa Louise Cook, and so happy to have you here. Like I said, um, it is the week after Thanksgiving, and we had a lot of fun last week. We're going to have a lot of fun today, too. We are going to be talking about how to find old maps and how to find them for free. And when you think about genealogy, I mean, it's all about the location and the time frame of where your ancestors were. And that gives you the context for everything, doesn't it? Gives you the context for the records that you're trying to find and that you need and uh, what's happening in the world around them. And that's infecting the decisions they're making. So this is really critical stuff for your research. So I'm happy you're here. And let's jump right into it because we have lots to cover. And then at the end, I will uh, take the questions from live chat and um, share a couple things with you. Okay, so old maps, um, that's what we're going to talk about. And of course, on episode 12, we talked about Google Earth, as you'll recall. Now this is the Google Earth software that's free. And of course, there you can find old maps. If you go down in the layers panel, uh, we can turn on open the gallery, click the box for Rumsey historical maps, they pop up those little gold medallions on the screen. And when you click them, you find these old map overlays. With one click, it automatically overlays right on to the modern day map. Um, it's kind of synchronized there, they call it geo referencing. And these maps that are available in the um, Rumsey historical maps in the layers panel of Google Earth, <clears throat> they're worldwide. And of course, as, as when you're further out, when you're up at satellite view, you are um, seeing a, a handful of these medallions. But as you zoom in closer, you're going to find more and more. In fact, uh, check this out. We've got Australia as well. I know we have lots of uh, Australian viewers here at Elevens with Lisa. So <clears throat> really neat to know that these are free. And there's about 120, 150 of them available. Okay, so you can also have your own old maps in the, the My Places panel. <clears throat> Excuse me. My Places is, uh, let's see here. Oh, the streaming's a little choppy. Probably it might be our internet. We had a little choppiness this morning. It might be yours. You might try refreshing the screen if you're having trouble. Um, so these are the maps that you can have in your own places panel. So you can drag and drop the Rumsey maps out of the gallery into the My Places. My Places is your stuff. Nobody else can see that. And we talk about this uh, in detail in many chapters in my book, The Genealogist Google Toolbox. I also have kind of a companion video tutorial series that teaches you about that as well. And one of the things we talk about is um, not only do you have the maps that you might be dragging and dropping out of the layers panel, but you might want to bring your own maps into Google Earth. And this is just one example of an old map that I had. Now, this could be a, a photo, a photocopy of a map, it could be something out of a book, it could be a digital map from another website. Um, this is an old plat map from an old county history. And you can create your own overlays. So while Google Earth provided some of them for us, um, that were already geo referenced, you can bring your own in right there with your ancestor's name on the plat map, and you can geo reference that as well. Any type of digital map this can be done with. So that's um, all in the book on how to do that. And of course, watch that episode 12 of 11s is to get more info, just generally speaking on Google Earth. But what if when you turn on the layers panel, and you click the Rumsey historical maps, they just don't have a map in the area where you need it, or maybe they do, but they don't have them in the right time frame. That's why you're here today, because I'm going to give you the best strategies for finding free old maps. And we're going to do that at davidrumsey.com. Now, in the book, I mentioned that these maps are all coming from the David Rumsey website. And David Rumsey is a cartographer. And uh, he's in the San Francisco Bay Area. He now has a huge I don't know, I guess you call it a map museum at Stanford University. And they are now kind of sponsoring his efforts. His collection, 
spans about 150,000 old historic maps. And so when Google first uh, obtained Google Earth, they said we'd like they approached him and asked him to maybe contribute 120, 150 maps that they could include. Um, but he himself and his team were busy trying to also digitize his entire collection. And you can imagine what a job that was. Well, Stan they've got Stanford University behind them now. And so they are past the 100,000 mark of digitizing that 150,000 map collection. And I'm imagining being part of Stanford now that they may be expanding that collection as well. So he makes these readily available for free at his website. And these now are not only being digitized, but they're also georeferencing them. And that's key because you can do it yourself and you can download these maps from his website and, and do it yourself like we talk about creating old map overlays. And I think it's a really important skill to be able to overlay any map yourself so that um, no matter where you get it from, you're able to create those. But it's really nice that they do some of that work for you. So I want to go and visit their website, show you how to find these maps. With Stanford behind them now, with all the backing, this website has gotten a lot bigger and a lot more complicated. And it's not as simple as it used to be to find the old maps that are digitized and available. I know your first question is, okay, Lisa, but I get these old maps at Rumsey Historical Maps and can I use them? Yes, you can. So first off at davidrumsey.com, you can go to the About tab and click Copyright. You'll get the copyright and permission statement that they have. And essentially, I can summarize it for you. For personal use, you are free to use the maps. Um, commercial use is considered the reselling of reproductions of the maps, which you can't do unless you get specific permission. So uh, most of these all fall under the Creative uh, Commons license. And they do let you know that maps that are after 1924 may have their own copyrights, which the site doesn't have any control over. So bottom line, if you're using these for yourself, uh, you should have no problem at all. And you can reference the copyright license uh, information here on their website. Okay, so um, davidrumsey.com. So let's take a look at the homepage. This is one of the things that has hugely expanded. And as you can see here, they have this kind of running ticker at the bottom. It's a good distraction, <laughs> but that's not the best way to be finding old maps. So as, as you scroll down the page, you'll notice that they have this next section. Past the ticker, um, you get to a couple of different key areas and some ways that they're categorizing these maps for you. So let's look at this. At the top, we have that you can click through and you can, it says browse 100,000 maps and images in the Luna Viewer. So this is the, the digitized maps they've done so far. Out of the entire collection, you can look at those through, through the Luna Viewer. We're gonna be talking about that in just a minute and how to use the viewer. Um, also, it's kind of interesting as you can visit the Rumsey Map Center at Stanford University, which is really amazing facility. So you can check that out when you have a few minutes. Um, view maps recently added. So as you kind of become um, skilled at making this one of your stops on a regular basis for your old maps, you might want to go here as, as you've combed through what they currently have, come back in a while, and um, you'll be able to jump right to what they do have now. So they are constantly digitizing and constantly geo-referencing, creating the overlays. This will give you the updates. Down below, now we've got popular collection categories. So this is kind of a nice place to introduce yourself, to get a feel for um, kind of how they um, categorize the maps, kind of what, what areas and topics they fall into. Um, there's a lot of different things here. Some are going to be really useful for you for genealogy. Some, maybe not so much. I don't know if pictures of globes are going to help or um, they've got uh, huge world maps and specialty maps. But there's some here that I think very much so we can make great use of. And depending on the life of your ancestor, who knows, maybe you need the maritime maps. As you go down the page, <clears throat> then you're going to see 
view three panoramas or original collections, the original collection space. So essentially, this is where David had all of his collection in his private space, I'm assuming maybe at home, I don't know. But it's kind of a neat pan panorama to show you where they came from originally. And then you can visit the Stanford facility as well. You can also browse the list of collections, um, oh, their entire list of atlases. So these are interesting. And some of these are just absolute works of art. So you can put that on your rabbit hole list. And there's also explore the georeferencer. We will be exploring the georeferencer in just a few minutes. As you come down further, you can see that they do have a blog. So if you want to, uh, you can subscribe to that. You can see what the latest projects are that they're working on. And a lot of times on the blog, what they're doing is highlighting and featuring and telling you the background on a particular map that's just really unusual and unique um, or has a real historic significance. So that's always kind of an interesting read. And below that, you see their featured maps. Again, they tend to feature the ones that are really globally of interest, um, that are very unique, that are art worthy. Um, not a great place to be looking for ones specifically for your genealogy research. The georeferencer not only is a tool to create overlays, but within the ecosphere of David Rumsey. So you can create them here, but this is not creating them for Google Earth. So when we think of georeferencing, we think of creating overlays, um, this will give you a tool within the David Rumsey website, but it's not necessarily translatable into Google Earth in terms of creating an overlay and then moving it over there. So that's not the purpose of it. And it's really also about um, helping them georeference the collection. Just like people do indexing for family search, if you decide that, gosh, you really like this and have a knack for it, you might really enjoy helping them on a volunteer basis through the georeferencer. The map rank is the other major tool that we'll be talking about. And this is again one of many ways that you can view the maps and it offers special features a little different than the Luna viewer. So let's recap all the different ways that you can view and find maps. And then I'll show you what I think are the best ways and uh, how to get them on your own computer. So the Luna viewer, that is really accessed through the main search box at the top of the homepage. This is where you can browse and search for the 100,000 digitized currently maps, okay? The georeferencer is that tool on the site where you can access the maps, but you're doing it in order to uh, take the maps that have not yet been georeferenced and put pinpoints on them so that they can be connected to the modern day map and in a sense create overlays. And it gives you kind of a comparison tool, which is kind of interesting. So it's a, it's a fun and unique tool to use on their website, but it's not necessarily, it's not creating overlays for Google Earth. And let me just say, and you might be wondering, why would you want to create overlays in Google Earth when you can do it over at davidrumsey.com? And my answer to that is, is that I'm, I, I like to be able to use a tool that I can use across my research. And oftentimes, if it even has application outside of genealogy, all the better, because it takes time and effort to learn how to use any tool, right? So we're already doing things like um, finding um, locations for our ancestors, plotting out immigration paths, making family history tours. As you know, we talked about these things in episode 12. We also talked about it in the neighborhood uh, Google Earth episode we did here at Elevenses. Uh, I have an entire book with seven chapters on Google Earth. So there's so many things that you can do and create and retain for your research for reference in Google Earth. That's why I would rather do it there than at David Rumsey, because I don't want to jump to two places. I want all the maps I'm working with in one location. So I see David Rumsey as a resource, but I see Google Earth as kind of a workspace. How about that? So it's, it's the workspace where all things geographic come together. So that's just my feel on it. But you know, after you work with it, if you try the georeferencer, you might think differently. But uh, there's so many things 
that we can use it for. It just seems a shame to be working in two spots. Map rank search, that is another way, a key way to browse and search for maps. The important thing to understand about that is right now, according to their website, that collection uh, that is accessed by map rank search is about 6,000 maps. And the difference is the quality of the tool. It's an excellent tool. I wish all 100,000 could be found searchable through map rank, but they're not. So there is a difference. I'm going to show you both. And um, oftentimes, I would say to get started using David Rumsey, I think map rank is a good place to start, even though it's a smaller collection you might very well find what you need. It's a vast collection. It's 6,000 maps and it's worldwide. The tool is wonderful. And then if you don't find what you need, maybe you go to the Luna Viewer. We'll talk about that. Another place that you can view Rumsey maps is again over at Google Earth. So I showed you that in our uh, beginning and there's about 120 maps. They said that on the website. Now I've read other places at Google that it's 150 maps. I, I know it varies, but it's in the couple of hundred. And those are found through the layers panel. And you can also add additional maps. Now, again, I'm not so sure in checking David Rumsey's website last night, if this is totally up to date. But I know when I download the additional maps, uh, I think I showed that to you in episode 12. I know I cover it in the book. Um, you can access another chunk of maps and they're saying it's about 140. Gosh, when I looked at it, it looked like it was about 300. But you know, the numbers in the in a couple of hundreds. So those can all be accessed through Google Earth, and you can actually save them to your places panel, the particular maps that apply to your research. You can also find the 120 Rumsey maps over at Google Maps. So how did they decide which 120? Uh, essentially, when Google first approached them, they said, would you give us 120 that are global in nature. So we want one on every continent, at least. And we want them um, to touch on important places, historical places, time frames that were key. So they really tried to find things that would be of the greatest interest to the most people, and historically significant. So that's kind of the thing. So you won't find as many of the town maps that I think are really interesting, because you know, our ancestors lived in towns. Um, because those aren't going to be as applicable to everybody around the world. So that just kind of gives you a sense. But there are some fantastic maps just in that simple collection. Second Life, I haven't heard about Second Life in a long time. I never really got involved with it. But um, it's that virtual world out there. <laughs> and if you're involved in Second Life, you can view some of the maps, um, a, a small collection of them in three dimensions, and they say at a huge scale. So there you have something called Rumsey Maps Island at Second Life. I, this is over my head, but you know, if you're into Second Life, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, they have like a welcome center. You can check out certain maps. They have 600, a 600 meter tall map cylinder showing hundreds of maps. It's, it's wild. I saw the picture of it. So when you go into this virtual world, that's the kind of experience that they're trying to create. I wouldn't say that's the place to go to look for maps for genealogy because there's so much more at davidrumsey.com. You can even find them through the ticker. That's really a browsing tool and a big distraction. Skip it. <laughs> it's going to take you down a rabbit hole. Uh, there's also something that you'll see on the website. It's called Insight Java Client. It's a downloadable workspace. Now you might find as you get more experience with this that you would be interested in using that. We're not going to touch on it today because there simply is enough time in this episode. And I would consider it more of an advanced feature. But just know you'll hear that term Insight Java Client. And it's something like Google Earth that you download to your computer and work within. But the most important tools that we're going to talk about today, the two top ways to search for your maps out of all the different options they're now providing are the Luna Viewer and the MapRank Search. So again, Luna Viewer, that's the main search box on the top of the page, and that's 100,000 digitized maps. MapRank digs into about 6,000 of those, but gives you, a, I think, a more powerful tool. 
So let's talk about the Luna Viewer because I think this is probably uh, the one you'll use most because it has the most in it. So you can browse and search specifically for these 100,000 free maps. Under View Collection, you'll see all these different options I just mentioned, right? But we're going to focus on the Luna Viewer. And you'll notice whenever you click things on the website, it's going to open it up in a new tab for you. So here's all the different items here. Uh, when you click through to view the entire collection, you can sp uh, specifically pick Luna Viewer, and then you'll see a little brief description and then that launch Luna Viewer button. That's what we're going to click. So this was the Luna Viewer, um, and I want to show you how to specifically dig into it. Okay, so first of all, there's the search box at the top. So here is where you would enter a location, a town, a county, whatever you're looking for. So I'm going to come up here and I am going to search for Dortmund, Germany. Okay, and we're going to click this button. Now you'll notice a little pop down came up. There's other options, but we're just going to search all the catalog data. What I notice is the little search you can't click it until you get away from that and close that pop up. So go up and then click it. Like I said, I think the Luna Viewer is a little bit glitchy. Now they found 18 maps that specifically refer to Dortmund, Germany. Uh, and this is where my, my great grandparents were from. Isn't this beautiful? Oh my gosh, some of, like I said, some of the artwork in these old map books are amazing. So you'll notice in the upper right hand corner that there's these little thumbnails. And we can jump between each of these 18 maps, or we can take them here from the home page. See how we can click through and click the next one. Now it doesn't mean that every one of these maps is of Dortmund. Look at this. This is Amsterdam. And if we click another one, oh, this looks like it comes out of a book with Hanover maps. Why would a map of Amsterdam or um, you know, here's Hanover. So Hanover, maybe it's close to Dortmund, who knows, but if we go look over here in the source information, now we're going to see this is what it picked up. So if the place you're looking for is called something else or has is in multiple places, that na name is used in many different states and countries, you're going to get a lot of different maps. So we have to refine it down a little bit. So just know it's it's looking at the metadata. It's looking at any words associated with the map and it's retrieving those for you. And each map has a little zoom tool right down here at the bottom. So you click the plus to zoom in, you click the minus to zoom out. So it gives you a smaller subset of maps, but it's not necessarily going to be exactly what you want. You're going to have to look at each one and see whether or not it's really the town, the Dortmund that I was looking for. Maybe Hanover is next door. Maybe there aren't any for Dortmund. And so it gave me the closest thing it could find. All of those are possibilities. Okay. So here's an example of a search that we could do. Uh, and there's kind of a challenge when you're using the search field to search because it is just looking at this metadata. Now you can imagine if I search for New York City, I'm not only going to find maps of New York City, I'm going to find maps that were published in New York City, right? Or that the author is from New York City. So that poses some challenges. That means we're going to have to use the refine tool on the left side of the screen. And this works really well, but again, it's a little bit glitchy. So you have to get used to kind of um, maneuvering around it a bit. Let me show you. So if we come up here, I've run a search for New York City. Now, I notice that whenever I hover my mouse over this refine tool, sometimes the little pop up box for the closest map pops up and you may just have to click away and come back. Each section in refine has a more. So you, whenever you see more, you know, there are more categories available to you. We could click, I want where New York and why. So specifically maps of New York. That would be a way to get rid of a lot of the extra stuff. 
you'll notice that we can um, add who. Who is the publisher of the map if there's something specific you're looking for. If I click more under when, look at my options for finding the map that fits the time frame that I'm doing my genealogy research. So here we've got 1874. Now, there's a little bit of a downside in this because you saw that they were categorizing every, by year. There was tons of years in there. We can't really get a, a spread very well. So you might have to click through and look at each year within the time frame spread that you're kind of keeping your eye on. And I thought this was fun. We talked about the 1939 World's Fair last uh, episode. And gosh, right at the bottom, there was a map. And it was like a tourist guide map for folks who had attended the 1939 um, World's Fair. So this happened in New York. That means that this falls within um, our results list. Kind of a unique map. And certainly um, for our viewer last, uh, last week who shared the photograph of her grandmother, or I think it was her mother, standing in front of, in front of the Adams Fountain. Uh, at the World's Fair, this would be kind of a fun addition to the family history. So the bottom line here is, is that we're searching within the search field and we're really searching all the metadata. Metadata being any words, information associated with each map. Um, we can close that refine section. If you find a map, you really want to get more screen coverage. You can close that up a little bit. As you click each item to refine, you can remove them if you want to and resort. Now notice there's actually two pages to this map. So just like, you know, genealogical records, look and see at the top, it'll say related right above the buy print button because you can buy prints of the maps if you want. Um, but there's a little related. It will tell you how many related images there are. In this case, there were two. So we knew even though we were seeing the one on our screen, we should be clicking through because there's another page to this. And there was, there was a backside to this. So one of the ways to get around some of the challenges of um, doing your initial search and then refining would be to use their advanced search field. So you'll find advanced search actually in two places. The first is at the very bottom of the refine column. And that will pop up this, what you see on the screen here. Also, remember when we clicked into the search field in the upper right hand corner, we had some options and the last option was also advanced search. So if you start to type in your search and you're like, uh, I need help with this, go ahead and just click advanced search, you'll get this and then now you can enter more specific, specific information and have multiple items that you're searching within. Really helpful when your search results, you know, brings back a thousand maps and you know that you want to get more specific than that. So uh, play with this and you can see it prompts you whether you want to find all the words that you're listing or just any of them. If you're just looking for maybe a couple of towns around a town that's hard to find or a town that is no longer there or no longer called that name today. Uh, you can also do the exact wording. You know, in our Google searches, we talk about putting quotation marks around a word or a phrase to get exact wording. You can do that through search as well. I tested quotation marks in the search field. It doesn't work. So you got to use the advanced search. That's just a tip if you want to get a specific phrase like World's Fair. Perfect example of one that you'd want to search through the advanced search field. Okay, so let's do an advanced search for Sanborn fire insurance maps. Uh, I love these maps because they're so specific to um, neighborhoods and towns. If we just do a basic search of Sanborn fire of all the data and click. Now notice see it's not clicking. You have to pull away and then you have to go back up and click it. And it's because that drop down box. So Sanborn Fire, look at this. We've got over 400 pages of maps and they consider one page to be one map. So even if it's a much larger map, it's a piece of a map. If it's one page, it's one map. Then we can come over here to refine and we could say, well, I just want a Sanborn Fire, but for New York City. 
Now I saw this map and I thought this does not look like a Sanborn fire map. In fact, I've seen this map before in Google Earth. So I was curious and came over down, come down here and look at the source information. And you'll see why we got this. It's by Sanborn and Bromley, right? So if we were to do an advanced search and put Sanborn fire in uh, the exact phrase, we wouldn't get this map because that's not what this map was. But it did come back. Now look, here, let's try with quotation marks, put the, it doesn't work you'll get zero. Okay, so use advanced search to put an exact phrase. But keep in mind, in a case like Sanborn fire insurance maps, they were not always called by that exact phrase throughout all the time frame that they were produced. So you would actually be eliminating Sanborn maps from your results if you got that exact. So I like to start kind of wide kind of a wide net, um, but we can use, how about the, in the advanced search, try this. In all fields, you'll be able to find the publisher. And that got me thinking, if I'm looking at who's the publication author and I just put Sanborn, I can see if it's always been Sanborn Fire Insurance Maps or whether there are, are a variety of names. Now look over here in the refine column. Under who, you see all the different variations. There's probably six different variations of the Sanborn publication name. So if we were searching for that name as an exact phrase, any one of those, we wouldn't get the other ones. So keep that in mind. Now let's try another one. I was going to look for uh, <clears throat> Stillwater, Minnesota. This is the town where my Lynch uh, and Scully families were from. We talked about in my Irish consultation episode and my filling in the blanks episode and Thomas Scully had a bar downtown and, and uh, Bridget and all the, the children live there. Look at this. We just put in Stillwater. And again, starting wide. If I just put the name of the town, I can quickly assess, well, I've got nine maps here and um, several are Minnesota. So here's Stillwater, M-I-N-N -N period. And so we know if we go over to where, now you can see six of them were, I think, Stillwater, Minnesota. Many of these are nearby or they mention Stillwater in some form. Maybe the, the author of the map was from Stillwater. We've also got Washington County, Minnesota, which is where Stillwater is. So it's kind of nice to take a quick look at the where and see what all the different options are. Gotta love these um, old maps because some of the town maps are just house by house drawn in. And for that given time frame, this is 1874. So my Scully family is living here, but the building where Thomas had his bar downtown is actually not yet built yet. So it's really uh, kind of interesting to see the layout of land when they first arrived. This is probably, you know, 10, 15 years after they got there. So lots of great, very specific town and location maps and county maps you saw. We had Washington County. That would be a really interesting one to look at as well. So you're going to want to download the maps, right? You, you find this and you think, oh, this is perfect. Oh, I want to create an overlay over at Google Earth using this town map. We need to export it. So at the top right hand corner of any map page, you're going to click export. Notice how many options you have. Here's the thing. If you download small, medium, I've even done large, <clears throat> 3000 pixels, a small would be 768 pixels. It looks great just basically on your screen. If you try to zoom in, it goes blurry. So uh, we have something to, to kind of have to take into account, which is we've only got so much storage space on our computer. You might end up wanting to get, you know, an external hard drive to store your high resolution maps. But the key here is to download the highest resolution that you can handle for storage. And when it's one that I really think is just incredibly important for my research, I'm going to refer to a lot. I go for the 
large as I can possibly do. It takes a little bit longer. It might take even up to a minute for it to finish processing and download to your computer. But I have found that the extra large is a good size to be able to zoom in, retain clarity, but not take up so much space because the next size up is almost twice the size, the extra, extra large. So let's do that with our Stillwater map. We're going to click export and come down and select. Um, here we could do these small ones. They're not going to help us at all, though, if we try to really get in there and look at the names that are written on these maps. So we could do Let's do a large. So we're downloading. It's going to be a JPEG. We open it up. It looks great. If we zoom in, now I'm just looking at it in my Windows viewer, and I'm actually going to turn it around because <laughs> uh, this is how I'm used to looking at it in Google in Google Earth, and it will help me find that Thomas's place was on Main Street, and it was right at the intersection with Myrtle, which I think is up here by the freight depot. Um, so Broadway turns into Main. It's right around here. Okay, so that's great. But when I zoom in and I want to get a closer look, you know, it, it's not, it's got a little bit of fuzziness. If I go to export and do the extra large, um, I'm almost doubling the size of the map in resolution. So I won't have any problem putting this into Google Earth. Here it is. I mean, both can go into Google Earth, but I really want to be able to zoom in just as close as I can with all the other Rumsey maps that I find in the gallery. So we'll turn this around and as we zoom in again, it stays really sharp, even closer. Look how close you can go in. So it's worth it. Do it. Uh, you can download under export, go for extra large if you can. And again, consider how you're going to use the map and how much storage you have. So our other top way to search and find these maps that you can download for free is the map rank search. Remember, this one doesn't do the entire 100,000 collection. It's really around 6,000 maps, but it does it by time and place. And this is so cool. So we're going to, from the home page, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom of the page. And that's where we found map rank. You can also find it through the menu system at the top and select it that way. But this shows you what it's going to look like and gives you a little button. We're going to click launch map rank. So this tool will open up any new browser tab. And this one, I think, is a really good place to first start searching for maps. Because of the glitchiness in the Luna Viewer, I think you're going to find this really rewarding. It's a huge collection anyway, and I think you'll probably find maps unless you have a very obscure place that you're looking for. So I'm going to look for a semi. I mean, it's a place that isn't called this anymore, which is Christ Ortlesburg. It's the uh, district, the county area where my great grandmother was born. And she was born in Grunwald and baptized in Klein Jerutten Parish. But that was all within Ortlesburg. Okay, but look at this. Down at the bottom, there's a time slider. Watch what's happening to our results list on the right. It changes every time we come up another century. So these maps go back centuries. But I want. Ortlesburg maps between 1700 and 1900. And now my results list is zeroed in on that. So it's the perfect melding of location and time frame, which is what we're all about. In this list, they are um, prioritized starting at the top by what is closest to what it was you were asking for. I'm going to just take the Christ part off and put Ortlesburg. Okay, so now notice that my, my map titles say Ortlesburg. The modern day map, which is, looks like Google Maps, says the Polish name of that town, the center of Ortlesburg, what it was back in East Prussia back in the day. Um, I can't even begin to pronounce it. Sinito? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we had somebody from Poland here one time watching this show. Maybe they could tell me. So if I click the very first map, that's the one that is, according to David Rumsey, the closest map with the most detail for this area. And it looks pretty good. So we can use the zoom tool 
and zoom in, come over here, check out the source information. This says it's um, 1888 was when this was produced. Who produced it, uh, the type of map it is, the scale, um, and any kind of notation. So this is where you're gonna be able to get your source information to attach to the map if you use it in other areas of your research. And you can, just like Google Earth, you can click on the map and you can drag it, drag it around, move around to look at the various locations. Let's come down here. Oh, and look at this. So KL Klein Jeruten, that is where the church was, where my great grandmother was baptized. And of course the beauty of this is that it's not called that today. So this old map that they've brought in, all of these are geo-referenced. So we can zoom in here. This is her brother, Johan, and his, in his baptism uh, record right out of the church. It says Klein Jerutten on it, and this is the place. So it's exciting to see um, where it is and where that would be today. So here's another example, and I want to show you how um, search selection works and navigation. Because remember, as we were moving our time slider, we ended up with the results list on the right hand side was ever changing. Okay, so we got it up to 1700, we bring it down to 1900. But what I want you to notice is, is that when you're looking at the modern day map, and you're trying to figure out which of the old maps you'd like to select, when you hover your mouse over each item, notice the red box. Okay, that's kind of a brownish reddish box. Here's the next one. So it's showing you exactly what that old map will cover. So looking at the modern map, this is really handy guys, because sometimes you'll turn on a map on in Google Earth from Rumsey Maps and you'll go, oh, well, it's massive or it's off to the side. This will show you exactly. So you've got your, your eye on the town you're looking for, you know which one you wanna click because it's highlighted it for you. I love that feature. And I didn't notice that at first when I first started using David Rumsey's uh, website, but it's really handy to, pick, to more quickly pick the one you want. And then as we zoom in, notice down here at the bottom, that little tiny picture. So within the picture is a little grayed out box and you can click and move that box to kind of more smoothly maneuver around the map and, and move. You've probably seen that kind of a tool with newspaper records. Um, it's very handy with the old maps. Again, you click click on the screen itself, but this gives you a little bit of control and lets you zero right in on the spot that you want. So you can compare these old and new maps. So I've pulled up this one of, of Klein Deruten. Now my great grandmother says she was uh, born in Grunwald. And can we find, there it is. Yay. Okay. So it's uh, right above Gherkin next to the forest. We're going to zoom in here. Let's compare. How, look at they've actually drawn the little houses right here in the town. If we come up here and view it in the georeferencer, remember I mentioned that one? Somebody's already done the work. You can do a comparison and kind of get that overlay effect that we get in Google Earth. So we pull up the map, get to the spot here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And there's Grinwald. And, and again, it's amazing how far in you can zoom in to the point where you see those tiny little houses that they've drawn. And when we go up to the top, this slider, watch what happens. There it is. Now we're looking at it compared to the Google map, which isn't all that exciting, <laughs> honestly. So let's change it. Up here in the left-hand side, if you click the globe, now you have a lot of different options to compare. Let's just compare satellite view. This is a much more realistic view of what the current day um, terrain looks like. Now let's slide back. That town hasn't changed much. It looks like it's expanded a bit to the south, but so many of those little houses are right there. You could even jump into Street View and take a look at it if Street View happens to be available in this location. 
And that's another reason why I like to do it in Google Earth, because then I can do that. And I can mark houses and I can, you know, do all those things. And I can save it and just retain it as part of my entire genealogy research collection. I call it my historical map collection. And um, I've got a premium video on how to create a historical map collection in Google Earth. So let's recap two ways, key ways to find these maps that I would recommend. One, the Luna Viewer. This is the one that's gonna give you the 100,000 maps. It's gonna help you search for and refine your search. It's a little glitchy, not my favorite. I hope they fix it. <laughs> but also the second one is Map Rank Search. Now this one works beautifully. Much smaller collection, but a very significant collection. And certainly one that I have continually found maps that I was looking for in a variety of locations. So it was not a disappointment. Um, you get more control with that time slider, which is so cool. And also that you're still being able to zero in on location. The map results that you're getting in that right hand column are ranked by which one is the closest coverage. If you want to learn more about how to do this, of course, I cover tons on how to um, do it in the book. If you are a premium member, I know many of you are, I hope you are, log into your premium membership at our website, go under premium to premium videos. So there's a couple of important videos here I want you to be aware of. Um, one is here's all the different categories we have. You're going to be looking for the ge geography collection of videos. These are full length video classes. They all have handouts. If you're new to Google Earth, go do this first, the Google Earth for Genealogy Beginner. Sanborn Fire Maps, I've got two different videos that go much more into specific detail, where to find them, and you can bring them into Google Earth, and also how to interpret them. This one is how to create your historic map collection, and that's where I'm saying pull it all together in one workspace. And if you need more maps beyond David Rumsey, the best websites for finding historical maps includes um, some of the top other websites that I have found over the years. And many of them uh, just have amazing collections. Each class, you can download the handout. So don't miss that. There's a link above your video to download the handout, and then you can watch the video. And some of you are asking about where some of the early episodes of Elevens is are, and that's part of your premium membership too. So just click on Elevens is with Lisa in premium. All the ones that have been archived and kind of moved off to the side are available there and all the downloadable handouts. Of course, for the free ones too, you can download handouts. There's a newsletter sign up. That's a way anybody can stay in touch with us. Absolutely free. And then you can also click here on our homepage for premium membership. Uh, the newsletter is a really important way to stay in touch. And of course, premium members, uh, for all the free 11s with Lisa videos that are out there, and there's dozens, um, you also have a unique downloadable PDF of the handouts. So that, my friends, is mapping. And I just hope you loved it and found things that you wanted. Um, let me head back here to chat. Uh, question, are they continually adding to the map rank search collection? Yes, I believe so. So because the georeferencing is ongoing, um, those are, I think, getting moved onto there. That's the plan. And if you want to help them with the georeferencing to move that along, you can also volunteer there. I had a question early on, even before I jumped in. Oh, let me see. There's another one. Can you move a map that you find from Luna Search to map rank search? You actually don't need to because each of those, what they do uniquely is to help you get a hold of the map. Once you've got a hold of the map, you're really working within the same kind of spot. Um, that's not a good word for it. You're, you're working with the same map. So there are two different avenues to get you to the map. But once you've got the map, then you're looking at the same thing regardless of how you accessed it. So there's no need to move it. The one thing you move it into, actually two things, you can click the georeferencer button that's going to let you do that comparison and do the fading back and forth stuff. Um, you can also export it and download it and then bring that into Google Earth and you can overlay it there. Um, could you put in a plantation name I'm hunting for? Well, yeah, absolutely. Put it this way. Uh, Mary, if anything is mentioned in the map, in the metadata for the map, then you can search for that, keyword search for it, and it should pop up. So um, yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> Sandy says, I'm going to be spending a lot of time working through everything you're talking about today. I know you're going to be up late today. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Hang on. Gwen's got a question. Sanborn fire insurance maps. Where do I find the key to the symbols? And are they the same from year to year? Or do they change? Uh, one, I think they do sometimes change. And you typically, and that's a good question, the key to the symbols. So I, I go over those specifically in those premium videos, but most of the books, if you think of the maps as coming out of a larger collection that Sanborn publishes that year, um, wherever you get the map from, whether it's from davidrumsey.com or you get it through Library of Congress, you might want to check to the front of the book or the back of the book the, or the collection. So the digitized pages um, should have an overview of all of the meanings behind what you're seeing in those maps. Um, many times the first page of the map and Sanborn had many pages for each town sometimes because of how large the area was and how close and in specific the maps were. So look on the pages themselves, sometimes the very first page of that particular town to see what the um, unique key is on the bottom of the page. But typically they came out of an even, even larger publication and that publication would have had several pages. Also the Library of Congress has a wonderful um, guide to interpreting Google uh, Sanborn fire insurance maps. I will put that on my list to put for you in the show notes so that you can get a hold of that. And finally, would it be best to start out with the simplest search and then go wider like Birmingham and then Birmingham, England? Yes, I think so. Now, Birmingham, England, England, I might just do Birmingham, England, but not any kind of exact phrase or anything like that and see what happens and then refine from there. Um, in the case of when I did Stillwater, just putting in Stillwater worked well. The first time I did it, I put in Stillwater, capital M, capital N, thinking like a Googling <laughs> search which is Google would understand that that includes Minnesota spelled out and it includes M-I-N-N. -N. David Rumsey doesn't work that way. It's a great example of how search engines vary every single website. So I went back to start broad and I just put the name of Stillwater. I would start with Birmingham and then go from there and maybe go in and just add the name England or use the advanced search. Um, oh, well, good. I'm glad you guys have enjoyed it. One of the things I wanted to say really quickly was I wanted to give a really big thank you shout out to all the wonderful societies that have been supporting this show. Elevens is with Lisa. Genealogy societies are the backbone of our industry and all of our research. And there's just a smattering of them that I have noticed and come across at Facebook. Guys, you know, if you're enjoying the free show, telling a friend about it, sharing it on Facebook, that means the world to us. That helps us so much because um, that ad that you see pop up before the video, well, it helps keep these lights on around here, but keeps the show free for you. So thank you so much to all of you. So with that, have a wonderful week. Happy mapping, happy searching. And uh, I'll have show notes for you here in just a couple of days. Thank you so much for joining me, my friend. I will talk to you soon.